Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to install custom firmware on your Q9 retro game handheld, also known as the RX97 and also known as the RS97. This thing has lots of different names. I think just websites call it different things. Anyway, this is the firmware that's on here right now. This is the stock firmware. Pretty basic. I don't really like it. We're going to be upgrading this to some custom firmware that can run lots of different things. I believe the custom firmware also lets this um, kind of like light button at the top work on here it's like pretty bad as you can see it works like properly with the custom firmware and yeah so what we're going to do is we're just going to hold the power button just to go and power this off make sure it is powered off fully because we will need to take out the battery so again just wait for it to power up a few seconds and then what we're going to do is we're just going to turn the console around you will need a screwdriver this is just a basic kind of you know one of your basic screwdrivers i got this with a game boy color kit it's just called a phillips head screwdriver so yeah we're just going to turn this around we are just going to take out the battery right now make sure you do not lose the screw for this so just put it somewhere to a side and then we can just take the battery out just like that and as you can see there should be an SD card at the bottom of it now your SD card could be here if it's on this side then you have the old version of the console I've got the newest version another way of telling is by looking at this metal strip here if you have this kind of cut out then you have the new version if it's just solid metal then it's the old version I will show you some more pictures of that on my computer in a second but yeah what you want to do is make sure you just take out this SD card now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep this and I'm going to be putting in another SD card so you can do that if you wish and you don't want to do that I just dropped mine down the plastic so I'm just gonna have to try and get this out and this it's gonna be awkward there you go so yeah don't drop your SD card in the plastic like I did here is mine I'm going to put this to a side seeing as this has all my ROMs and original stock firmware on there and the new firmware the custom firmware doesn't come with ROMs pre-installed so you will need to add your own anyway here is my brand new SD card I will be connecting this to my computer in a second but there's one more thing we need to do we need to take note of that kind of white text right there as you can see mine says RG plus version 1.0 keep note of what that is that that depends what firmware we're going to get okay so once you've got note of that all we want to do is get our SD card I've got my brand new one you want to get some kind of SD card adapter just like this and I'm just going to go and connect this to my computer and I will show you guys what to do next okay guys so over on our computer make sure our SD card is connected the first thing I'm going to do is format it so as you can see mine is right here I'm going to right click go down to format now keep in mind when you format something it deletes everything on there so I'm just going to select the capacity select the file system as XFAT select this as default allocation size give it a name if you want maybe like SD card or something like that uh, make sure quick format is ticked just click on start click on OK and it's then just going to format it so there you go format complete we can close out of this and we We've now got our blank SD card. What you want to do next is go to the links in the description of this video. The first link is to get the custom firmware itself. So scroll down and here it is, the Retro Gamer, the RS97. So if we scroll down, we can find out which version we have got. So if you scroll in and have a look at this image, as you can see, there are two types. There is an old version and a new version. I have the new version because as you can see, my metal frame has a slot in it. So once you've found out which version you've got, you can and then get the custom firmware for it so mine was firmware version 1.0 or you can pretty much get any custom firmware you want really um, you can get this version um, you can get this version it's entirely up to you which one you get um, so yeah just select any custom firmware and um, then we can test it out so I did try this one, this is a full custom firmware and for me it just wouldn't boot up. So what I'm going to get is revision 3.0 so you can follow along if you like to. This one is a base custom firmware but we can add everything. So just click on this and that is going to begin at downloading. Once we've got that you want to scroll up and you want to click on this right here. You want to click on PY menu and download this as well. You also want to click on this IPK files from the game blah blah server. Once you've clicked on this we need to download all of these. So these are all IPKs, these are basically 
basically emulators that we can install on the device. So just click each one, they're very small files and they're just going to download. I've actually already downloaded all of them. Okay, so once we've got all of these as well, we want to go to the next link. This is the Windows 32 Disk Imager. This is the software we will use to burn our image onto our SD card. So click on download, wait the five seconds, and then this will go into your downloads folder as well. Um, so yeah, this is some pretty useful software. So yeah, just wait for it to download and I've already got it, so I'm going to cancel it. But once we've got all of these files, all we want to do is head over to our downloads folder. So here is everything. The first thing we need to do is double click on the Windows 32 disk imager and just go through the setup. I have already got this installed, but you just accept, click next, next again. I've already got it, so I'm just going to cancel this right now. Then we need to get our image file, right click the zip file and just select extract here. This is going to extract our image file into our downloads folder. Now once this has finished extracting, we, we want to go and open up Win32 Disk Imager. So just type in Win32 and you'll be able to find it and just open it up. Next, we need to make sure our SD card is selected, make sure the device letter is correct, and then just click on this folder icon right here and we are going to browse for our image file. So here is mine, retro firmware.image, click on open, and now just click on write. Now just click on yes, and it's going to write across onto the SD card. This could take some time, so just wait for this to complete, and I will be back once this is done. So when it's done, it's going to say write successful. We can click on OK and click on exit. And all of these like text boxes and stuff is going to open. You just want to make sure you open all of these and cancel them all off. It's basically trying to format it because some of the partitions are not recognized by Windows. So just cancel off all of this stuff. And this is basically the root of it. As you can see, we've got apps, emulators, games, ROMs. What we want to do is actually just close out of this, go onto the root. We want to copy across the IPKs to the root. We want to copy across our ROMs as well but let's just wait for this okay so once that's done we can get our roms i've got a wonder swan rom that i want to test so we can copy across this to the roms folder and we can also copy across py menu into the ipk folder and then yeah that is pretty much it for the pc um obviously you can add as many roms as you want to you can add game boy game boy color all that kind of stuff i just want to test that wonder swan so yeah let's go back onto the device and let's see if the custom firmware is working Okay guys, so once we're back, here is my SD card with the brand new custom firmware installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it back in and then we can put it back together and we can see if it works and just set it up and everything like that. So it's always a good idea just to keep your original one just in case you want to back up the ROMs from it or something like that. Or you can just use the same SD card, it's entirely up to you. But yeah, carefully just try and put this back in. Um, there is sometimes a foam piece on top of it I had already taken mine off, but yeah, I'm just going to try and carefully get this in. It's quite tricky to get back in, to be fair. Okay, so there you go, SD card plugged in. We can then just go and put our battery back in as well. So there you go, we get the retro firmware logo. And then just wait a few seconds. It's going to come up with this saying the partition extender is just extending the partition on our SD card. As you can see, that's the current size. Yeah, just wait for it. It says it may take several minutes. This came up as soon as I put the battery in, so I haven't even put the um, screw in yet. So I'm just going to try to do that now as it's extending the partition. Now it looks like it's doing a file system check. Again, you just have to wait for it. It's just setting up the firmware. And then it's loading, and here you go. We're now on the custom firmware operating system. So as you can see, it's looking pretty blank. That is because we need to install our IPK files. So go over to Explorer, press A. Scroll down to where it says IPK, and press A to open up this. And now we can start installing everything. So we don't even have to install anything. That's the nice thing about this firmware. We can customize it. So we've got chocolate Doom, I'm going to get that, so I'm just going to press A on it. It's then just going to start installing, and you will know when it's done installing because it will actually come up with a dollar sign, just like that. So when it's done, you can press B to go back. Let's install some other things. I need the Wonder Swan emulator, so I'm going to press A on this just to install that. Press B to go back. Um, pie, pie menu, we also need to get this, so press A on this. Um, it's then just going to start installing it. And there you go, that's done as well, so press B to go back. We've got Quake. You can just install everything on here. With Quake and Doom, you will need the ROMs for them, but you can pretty much, you know, just install the launchers. Um, Quake looks like it's taking a while, so there you go, installing Quake 2 as well. 
So then Quake 2 is done. We've also got a PlayStation emulator. We can go in and install that as well. Some of these emulators don't really take too long. Some of them take longer than others. Um, we've got another Quake. We've got, um, yeah, quite a lot of different kind of emulators. We've also got Sega Master System. We can install that quickly as well. So once you have installed all of the emulators you want to, or you have installed every one, you can back out and you can see we have got stuff. So we've got a Pi menu. If we scroll on to emulators, we've got Wonderswan, PlayStation, um, Sega Master System. If you scroll onto this, as you can see, we've got Doom, Hentrick, Hexen, Strive, Quake 2, and we've also got some other stuff. You've even got setups for each of them. So what I'm going to do first is show you the Pi menu. So if you press A to open up this, this looks like, is it Retro Pi for the Raspberry Pi? It looks just like that. It's got a really nice theme to it. It takes a couple of seconds to launch. But yeah, as you can see, we've got um, Game Gear, we've got Wonderswan, Wonderswan Color, PlayStation, ports, pretty much whatever you add. Let's try Wonderswan Color right now. Or is it Wonderswan? I've got one of the games. Let's try this one. So Wonderswan, Digimon, um, I think it's, was it start or just A? Oh, it's just A. And as you can see, the ROM will load up just like that. And this is very loud. So yeah, I just turned the volume down on that quick. But we can go on options as well. Um, I think there's like some settings you can change. Um, it appears to be mine's in Japanese. I don't know why I've downloaded this, but you guys get the idea. You can press the um, home button as well, and you will be able to change stuff. It's probably in scaling, is it full screen? And if we go on continue, I think it's probably that. There you go, now it's in full screen mode. We can also press the power button and we can actually just go down to exit. And yeah, that is how you get the custom firmware. The custom firmware is a lot better. It also fixes the brightness button. As you can see, you can turn this and it actually works, you know, pretty decent this time um, rather than the, you know, the terrible crap version. So yeah, pretty cool. I really like this custom firmware. It's actually really good. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.